Hi, I'm Colton with Porsche Center Calgary and here today with a very cool, very exciting piece of pre-owned inventory. This is a 2018 911 GT3. That means it's the 991.2 generation uh, and possibly my favorite car Porsche has ever made. I absolutely love this generation of car, uh, especially the, the GT3. Uh, it's quite, quite the thing. Uh, let's talk basics and then I'll dive into this guy in particular. Uh, it's a very heavily optioned car, so that there will be a lot to talk about with this one. Um, but the basics first, the GT3 is kind of the, uh, you know, the, the racier version of the 911. Some sacrifices are made in terms of comfort uh, to dial up the performance side of it. Not so extreme as the GT3 RS. Uh, and frankly, that's why I like it personally a little bit better. It's a little bit more usable day to day if you want to get more use out of it and not strictly track use. Uh, but then if you do want to bring it on the track, obviously it'll uh, you know, more than reward you in, uh, in that sense. So this generation, uh, saw a few enhancements over the 991.1, uh, different engine. The first uh, version uh, used a 3.8 liter. This uses a four liter horsepower up to 400 with these ones. And also just aesthetically rear uh, wing changed a bit, front bumper changed. Uh, inside it gained Apple CarPlay and the new uh, PCM infotainment system with uh, pinch to zoom navigation and Apple CarPlay functionality. So. For those reasons, I tend to gravitate to the 0.2 over the 0.1, but above that, uh, the 991.1 GT3, you could only get with the PDK dual clutch transmission. Great transmission, faster than the manual, uh, but a lot of people really wanted the engagement factor of that manual. Um, and actually made, made quite the fuss. There was a, a, lot of, a lot of communication sent to Porsche saying, no, 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 we want that car. Please build it again with the manual. So with the point two, they put the phenomenal uh, six-speed GT manual transmission, uh, which this particular example is equipped with. Uh, and that's what makes it virtually a perfect car to me. I absolutely love it. Um, and I really, really love this one in particular. So let's, uh, let's dive into that. Starting with the outside, this is Guards Red, classic Porsche color, but you didn't see it too much uh, on this generation of 911. So it's, uh, it's neat to see it actually fairly rare. Um, also worth mentioning about this one, the whole thing is wrapped in paint protection film. So the previous owner did not just the front end, which most of our customers will do, but actually the full thing wrapped in clear paint protection film. So you can drive it, you can get out onto the roads and don't have to worry about every you know little rock coming at you because it does have that sacrificial layer uh, on there to protect it, which is yeah awesome, awesome to see. Uh, these wheels are the standard GT3 wheel, but painted in the satin black, uh, which looks great with the guards red ring around it, which if you're gonna do the car in red, might as well do that. Nice uh, nice subtle touch that adds up to, to more than the simplicity of it kind of suggests. Um, some other stuff outside, another subtle one that I love, the side skirt is painted body color. So standard, that would be just unpainted black plastic. When that's painted body color, it tends to just kind of make your eye feel as though the car's lower th than it is, gives it a sportier look, uh, really, really cool. Other stuff outside, these uh, side mirrors. This is the Sport Design side mirror in carbon fiber. Uh, adds kind of a, a sporty appeal there as well. The headlights are the top level LED PDLS, which is Porsche Dynamic Lighting System. So they'll turn with the steering wheel. They'll look further down the road as you speed up. And you've got the auto high beam function there as well. And then they did the uh, gloss. Um, gloss black door handle, uh, picking up on the black wheels and kind of that, uh, you know, black red theme throughout the car. Um, let's move on then to the inside. So this one is um, a full, full leather interior, technically they call it, but not really because with the GT cars, it's a combination of leather and Alcantara. Uh, but what it means when you see the leather interior is that the dashboard is leather wrapped as opposed to being more of a vinyl material as well as the tops of the doors leather wrapped. Uh, and then you have Alcantara in the seat, uh, kind of the seat centers with the outsides being leather and just that combination of leather and Alcantara throughout. And then uh, this customer went a little bit further and did the extended leather and, and contrasting stitch package. So you get the extra bit of leather even on the very kind of extreme edge of the uh, of the dashboard with the guards red stitching throughout there surrounding your um, your uh, air vents and speakers and all that stuff. Looks really cool and is uh, pretty rarely optioned. So nice to see even things like when you open the, the door and where kind of the edge of that dashboard is, that's leather wrapped as well with the guards red contrast stitch. So really, really beautiful uh, interior with a bunch of extra stitching. Even things like the steering column uh, wrapped in leather with contrast stitch. The air vents, the surround of the vents is painted guards red to match the outside, but then the actual slats themselves leather wrapped 
uh, beautiful. And you know, very few manufacturers will even give you the option uh, to have leather air vents. So there's very little, uh, I would say, you know, exposed plastic in the car. Just about everything in here is leather wrapped, which is just awesome. And I love that Porsche uh, allows you to do that. It makes the car feel just so, so very premium. I should have mentioned as well on the outside, but I'll say it now. Uh, the yellow brake calipers indicate, of course, that it has the a uh, Porsche, uh, ooh, I, I want, always want to say carbon Porsche, ceramic composite uh, brakes. So that's about a $10,000 option. Gives you phenomenal uh, braking performance, of course, and virtually no brake dust. So really, really cool, especially if you're going to use the higher, um, higher kind of end of the performance capabilities of the car. Uh, but more stuff inside because there's quite quite a bit in there. Uh, this one has the 18-way adjustable seat. So with these cars, there's three seats available. You can have the Sport Plus or manually adjusted seat or the 18-way seat, same shape, but a whole lot more adjustments, variable bolstering, uh, thigh extension, lumbar support, all that. That's what this one's optioned with. A lot of them you'll see with the carbon buckets, which if you're you know building it to be purely a race car, sure, that's a cool seat, but a little bit less livable day to day. This to me gives you a little bit more comfort, but as I mentioned, you still have that variable bolstering, so it can be a very you know tightly hugging seat, give you the performance kind of feel when you want to be you know snug in that seat, but not uh, make it so difficult to get in and out as the carbon carbon buckets do. Um, other stuff, uh, I don't want to forget anything here. Um, the aluminum look fuel filler cap, another subtle subtle touch that dials up that premium factor. So when you're fueling up the car, you don't have just that black plastic, it's that more aluminum look and feel, which is, uh, which is pretty cool to see. We also have the front axle lift. So if you are driving into you know steeper parking lots or over big speed bumps, uh, or even onto your own driveway, if that's too steep and you're gonna scratch uh, the front end, just press the button and it inflates uh, inflates a kind of a tube in there effectively and lifts up that front end, which is which is pretty cool and uh, a lot more convenient than I initially thought it would be before I tested it out. Uh, so yeah, highly advocate for for that option on these cars that are you know quite low. Um, it also has the uh, guard's red seat belts inside. Um, I mentioned the steering column. Oh, the red uh, dials as well, and the red uh, sport chrono clock. So really dialed up that black red contrast on the inside as well as uh, on the outside of the car. Uh, the headliners were always Alcantara, which is that kind of synthetic suede material, but the sun visors are vinyl unless optioned to be Alcantara as well, which did happen on this car, which I love to see that cohesive material uh, throughout the top of the car. The armrest as well would have been Alcantara regardless, but with this one they did Alcantara with the Porsche logo, which is my favorite thing to do on the armrest in these cars. So as I said, I really like the spec. It speaks to me quite a bit. Uh, the Sport Chrono package was optional, but that's here. I mentioned the dial and that is red, but the package itself is there too. Uh, the trim is carbon fiber, matching, of course, the mirrors on the outside. They even did the carbon triangle, which is just that little little piece kind of beside the mirror. Um, but that was a separate box to take as well. Otherwise, that would have been black, unpainted plastic. Uh, the door sills, too, also carbon fiber and illuminated, which is awesome. I love when you see, you know, you can tick just one carbon box, and then you have kind of a mixture of painted stuff or aluminum stuff as standard. But here, everything virtually that could have been carbon was. So you've got that, again, that cohesive kind of feel throughout the car. Uh, I think that's about everything that I had written here. But yeah, there's there's a whole lot with this car. Uh, immaculately optioned in, uh, in my opinion. I really like when people get a little bit more indulgent. And uh, this is an example of that really showing all of the stuff that Porsche lets you do. Very, very cool. Uh, and that's just kind of from an aesthetic point of view, performance wise as well. The car is, is phenomenal. That six speed manual is tremendous. And you've got the four liter naturally aspirated flat six. Sounds tremendous. Uh, the engine revs out to about 9,000 RPM and the noises it makes in that range are, uh, are pretty incredible. So uh, I've probably gone on enough about this car, but if you wanna learn more, if you wanna come and see it in person, please do come down and, uh, and pay us a visit. Thanks so much for watching.